Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial by Zebra Code. In this tutorial, we are going to use the load data local in file function in MySQL. We will be using MySQL database and XAMPP. Sometimes you have a file that you want to load into a table in MySQL. The file may be very large due to the amount of data it contains. So to do that quickly, the load data local in file function will be very useful and we are going to use it in this tutorial. In the process of this MySQL database tutorial, we will use the command line for XAMPP. We will create a database. We will create a table. We will use the load data local in file function in MySQL and we will load CSV data into a table. Now with that said, let's go to where MySQL is installed in our system or where XAMPP is installed so that we can launch the command line CMD prompt. Okay, navigate to where XAMPP is installed on your system. Now click on the XAMPP control button to launch it. When you click on this XAMPP control button, this page will pop up. Start Apache and start MySQL. With both Apache and MySQL running, now let's click on this shell. This is the command prompt that we are going to use, the shell. Click on it. Great. Now with this one open, we can actually start writing our command. The first thing is for us to log in to the MySQL server. To do that, there are many options, but I am going to use this. MySQL hyphen h that is host localhost space hyphen u that is user root i am using the default login details for the mysql server on zamp which is a root and no password so hit enter great you will get a page that looks similar to this it shows that you have logged in successfully and your MariaDB connection ID is. It will show you what the ID is. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine, which says 94, but it should be something similar. Now, with this one in place, it shows that we are logged into the MySQL server. Here, you may want to see the databases you have already. To do that, you just say here, show data basis semicolon hit enter yes it shows that i have 25 databases on my server now i am going to create another one which is for this tutorial i will create a database here and name it communications create database if not exists communication semicolon create a database if not exist communication hit enter great query okay one row affected let me move this one up a little bit now let's use it use use what use communication that is the database we just created semicolon use communication hit enter database changed we have a database communication and we are using it so let's create a table in that database we will call our table members create table if not exist members ID int auto increment primary key comma name voucher fifty not null comma Age 
int not null comma city value eighty. I close the bracket semicolon. So what we have here is a statement to create a table for the members table. Create table if not exist members id int auto increment primary key name vacha 50 not null age int not null city vacha 80 then we close the bracket now hit enter great query okay rows affected zero maria db now let's see how our table structure is describe members great this is how our table looks now so the next thing is for us to populate it with data there are many ways we can do that it depends on the size of the data we are trying to use to populate the table remember this video is about using the load data local in file feature in my sql so we are going to use that uh, my sql statement here Now let's create our own CSV file. There are many ways you can create your CSV file. You can use the Microsoft Excel to create it and there are other tools you can use to do it. But it's also possible to use a notepad to create it. Let's create a simple one here with notepad. Open notepad and let's enter some data. Name, comma, age, comma city as common as well so i'm getting them from here i said id because it's auto increment we don't need to enter it here we can just leave it out so we have to enter the other three fields which is for the three columns name age and city now let's enter some data for that Andy Jones Andy Jones command 22 command California command and that one here now we have name age Siri Andy Jones 22 California Harry Benz 19 Chicago less copy this one and paste it a few times below it change this one to Eddie Vance 22 New York oh, this one here America Wiki 34 Lagos Ken Rogers twenty six Oakland Julia Pint thirty two Julia Pint thirty two London Sally Williams fifty six Portland Let's add a few more to eat. Add a mark. 71. Abuja. 
Momo. Luther. Heinz. 77. Berlin. Let's add one more. Your Prince. 51. Joe Prince. 51. Paris. Remove that. So now let's save it as a CSV file. File. Save us. I'm going to save it in a folder which I named Demo Work and it's on my desktop. I will call it members.csv. Copy the part of where you are saving it into. Now save it. Now we have a CSV file. If we go into that folder to check it, yes, now we have a CSV file named members.csv. It is an Excel file, but it's a CSV file. Now that we have created our CSV file, it is time to load it into the members table using the load data local in file MySQL function. So we are going to write that statement. Load data in file. Uh, paste that part you have just copied. I'm on Windows. Change this one to forward slash. And remember to add the name of the file members.csv into table. And what's the name of our table? Members fields terminated by command and closed. By lines terminated, lines terminated by backslash R backslash N. Ignore one line. Now we also need to enter the names for the colon that we want to enter data into. The first one here is name, the second one is age, and the third one is city. We don't need the one for the ID because that is going to be auto increment. So what we have here is load data in file. This is the part to where the file is. Into table members, fields, terminated by, comma, enclosed by, double quotation marks inside single quotes, lines terminated by, return, and this one is for new line. Ignore one lines. It's always lines, whether it's one or many. These are the columns that we want to load data into. So what is actually happening here is easy to understand. Let me open the CSV file. Yes, this is our CSV file. What we have said here now is use the load data in file to load this file in where it is into table members fields terminated by comma remember we have here everything comma that is why it's called csv csv stands for comma separated value enclosed by double quotes yes everything here is enclosed by double quotes lines terminated by return a new line which is how we created uh, each individual line ignore one line so it's going to ignore this particular line we don't need the headings it's going to ignore it and name, age, city, these are the columns we want to load the data into. Now, let's run our MySQL statement. Great. It worked magic. Query OK. 10 rows affected. Now, records 10. In our database, now we have a table members, and that table is populated with the CSV file that we have just created. Let's view that select star from members so let's select everything uh, hit enter great everything was imported successfully that was very fast to do that is one of the reasons why we use the load 
data local in file function in my sql because you can easily use it to load a file that is large so this file wasn't very large assuming we were going to load a file that is really very large it will be difficult to enter the data manually uh, it will be time consuming and it will be prone to error to avoid making mistakes and to save time it will be helpful to use the load data in file feature in my sql here is an example this is a huge file that i have here it is for google play stores it's a dot csv file and it has about 10,000 entries almost 11,000 entry that is 10,842 rows and it has many columns so to type this one up will be time consuming and sometimes to load data into your mysql database with something like php admin could have some limitation but the load data local in file feature we do it for you easily let's do that now we are going to create a table for this and use the load data local in file feature to load this file into it now to save time i'm going to paste this code which i have just copied it is a mysql statement to create a table and the name of the table is google app stores so it says here create table if not exists google app stores id int not null auto increment primary key app name virtual 200 not null category virtual 100 not null rating virtual sys not null reviews int not null size virtual 8 not null installs int not null type virtual 50 not null price decimal not null content rating virtual 50 not null genres virtual 100 not null last updated virtual 30 current version but i abbreviated it here to va virtual 6 not null android version abbreviated to va virtual 20 not null where are these coming from they are coming from here I got them from here app category rating review size install type price re content rating genres last updated current version android version the source of this file i will put it in the description area there will be a link to it so now with that out of the way let's hit enter to create the table great query okay rows affected now let's look at that table describe google app stores as this very table we just created describe let's see it great this is the structure for that table that we have just created now we are happy with that let's actually load data into that table okay i'm going to paste the code i have written here which is similar to the one that we just used a few minutes ago it's similar to this one because that file is in the same directory yes this is the file we are trying to load now into that table so what did we actually say here let's maximize this we said here load data in file this is the source and the name of the file is google play store.csv into table google app stores feed terminated by comma and it goes on with these headings so app name category rating review size installs type price content rating genre last updated current version android version they are all here the only thing we have left out here is the id because that is auto increment now let's hit enter great that was very fast so it took just 1.68 seconds for that 
huge CSV file to be loaded into the table. Here it says query OK, 10,841 rows affected. These are warnings. They are as a result of the ID column that was omitted. So, so ignore them. They are just warnings there. Now, if we want to view that table, it will take a long time for it to display if we select everything let's do that you will see in a minute select from google app stores semicolon so select from google app stores we are going to select everything it's going to take a long time hit enter All right, now all the rows are displayed. 10,841 rows were actually loaded into the table. But this took some time to display and everything is a bit difficult to read here. So let's reduce the amount of rows that are displayed so that we can see everything clearly. As is Select from Google App Stores limit 20. This will display only 20 rows. Exactly. Now we have only 20 rows displayed. And that was faster compared to the time we displayed everything, when we had to wait for a long time for everything to be displayed. What is here now is easy to understand. We have the ID column, the app column, the category, rating, reviews, size, installs, type, price, content rating, genres, last updated, current version, and Android version columns displayed. But because it's a very wide table, some of them are appearing under some headings. So let's fix that. To do that, I'm going to run another query that will limit the number of columns that are displayed. Select app name, comma, category, comma, rating, comma, reviews, comma, installs, comma, price, comma, genres, from Google App Stores, order by rating installs limit 10 so this my sql statement is to select app name category rating reviews installs price genres from google app stores we order it by rating installs and limit it to 10 we will only have 10 rows displayed let's Run that. Great. Now when we hit enter, this is what we get. 10 rows displayed. We have here app name, category, rating, reviews, installs, price, genres. So if you look at the original file, the CSV file, price was set to zero anyway. Let's confirm that. Yes, the price column, everything is set to zero so this video shows how to use the command line or the share or the cmd to run my sql statements with zamp 
and we particularly looked at the load data in file feature of my SQL. But we can also do this thing with a web GUI as web interface, maybe through PHP my admin. Let's see that. Here ZAMP comes with PHP my admin installed with it. So the PHP my admin interface is what I'm using now to access my databases. And here you can see the communication database with the Google App Stores and member tables in it. If I copy this, my SQL statement now, and run it through the web interface, I will get the same result. Here it's possible to run the same my SQL query or write the same my SQL statement through the web app interface. Here the columns are all displayed. Now I'm going to select this one, delete it and paste the query that I just copied. It is exactly the same query this MySQL statement that we run here that I am going to run through the web interface. This one here. Now when I run it, exactly the result is displayed. It is the same. So we have exactly the same result here as we have here. They are exactly the same as the results that we get here. So this is how you use both the command line and the web interface for my SQL using a ZAMP. Uh, let's click on the whole table to view everything. So when I click on select from Google App Stores, that is to show everything, we will get this kind of result. This is with PHP my admin. So it means it has many pages. It has about 434 pages with 25 rows displayed per page, depending on what is on the last page. So in this tutorial, we have used MySQL database. We used the command line for XAMPP. We created a database. We created a table and we used the load data local in file feature of MySQL to load CSV data into a table and we also used both the command line and the web interface for php my admin to access our data i hope you learned something from this video subscribe to our channel share the video comment the comment session and i will leave a link in the description area of the video to the files that we have used for this video Thank you for watching. Bye for now.